Greetings everyone, this is Danny from hardtravel.com and I'm currently on board the beautiful Norwegian getaway. She just had a major makeover. I've sailed on this ship several times and absolutely love her and she looks even better since the makeover. So let me show you what this ship is all about. So follow me over here, you can see these brand new water slides. Of course, they had some water slides, they really took them to the next level and added several on there. I think that's perfect. We've been seeing that with the Norwegian fleet, of course, adding on these really, really special water slides. I love the racers because it's always fun, especially if you're going with your kiddo or family member, it's always fun to race against them. The secret is to eat more before you go on because the heavier person always wins and I usually do pretty well with that. But down here is the kids area. It's where you're gonna find my daughter and uh, my niece and nephew for sure. And then you've got the main pool area here as well. And in the distance, you can see the ropes course. We'll talk more about that when we get back there. But I just wanted to wrap around here and say, it's been raining uh, part of the morning. It's turnaround day. The ship is just getting going. So all these deck chairs are gonna be out here in just a few minutes. This is a lot of sun deck space here as well. And then if you follow me to the very, very front here, I love that it wraps around completely, but down below me is the other main pool deck and you have two hot tubs right there. And then of course right now you got the DJ spinning, but they're gonna have a tropical band here in a little bit. And in my mind, nothing takes my blood pressure down, makes me happier than the, the steel drums happening as I'm sailing out of the port. All right, so now we're gonna head aft. I wanted to point out that this is the jogging track right here. Once again, all these deck chairs are gonna be set up here in just a little bit. They do a thorough cleaning and when they turn around the ship. Really, really appreciate that they do a fantastic job with that. And then over here, you can see where the water slides are gonna land. So once again, these are the racer water slides. As we continue on back, I'm gonna take you up to the ropes course. So the ropes course with Norwegian Cruise Lines debuted on the Norwegian Breakaway. And I believe they took it you know, to the next level a bit on the getaway and then of course the escape as well. But what's so cool about it is it's a, a fun interactive thing that different family members of course can do. But it's great because you have that, that active kinetic energy that the kids can get out. And of course there's a little bit of a competitive nature in there as well. So follow me up to the ropes course. This is a great angle to see what the ropes course is all about. Over 2,000 feet, it's a really, really significant one. But once again, it's just a lot of fun. And if you're an active person that really likes to do something new and different when you're on a cruise ship, this is a perfect option for you. Now follow me into the sports court. So some of my favorite family memories in addition to miniature golf are playing basketball, dodgeball, and soccer on board cruise ships. I started cruising when I was a really young kid. My brother, my dad, and I, we always loved to do it. My dad's a basketball coach. My brother played with me in high school, so let's see if we got anything left. And his favorite thing always to say was, the bank is closed. It's kind of tough shooting with a wet basketball, isn't it? All right, well, I'll try that one more time. Let's see. Even worse. So right now I'm, uh, I'm suffering a, a minor setback, a knee injury. So I'm gonna do a little throwback Rick Berry and see what I got. There you go. If you can't do it that way, do it the other way. Fair enough. All right, so just below the ropes course, you have miniature golf. I love miniature golf. It's one of my all time favorite cruise ship activities. I've played it since I was a little kid and I still now play it with my daughter. But what I love specifically about this miniature golf is that you have a pirate theme. So follow me along here. Let's see what I can do here. All right, all right, lay up, lay up. Get it up and in. Ah! Nope, not quite, all right. Let's try that again. Story of my life. All right, let's try it one more time. All right, I surrender. But I did want to point something really cool out because it is pirate theme. If you follow me over here, one of the unique features that they put on the ropes course is the ability to walk the plank. Talking about pirates, but that's the spot up there. So if you're brave enough, Arr, me matey, go ahead and give it a try. So just down from the sports court below the ropes course, you're gonna have this rock climbing wall. Once again, another fun, active thing to do. So if you are somebody who loves to uh, participate in sports while you're cruising, vacationing, this is perfect. I know growing up, this is my brother and I were always super competitive with everything. I would have been the first to ring the bell for sure, right Will? All right, and then one last thing that I wanted to point out, you have this vertical reality. It's actually really cool. It's a spider web that you climb up all the way through and then slide down. It's a pretty extreme slide, awesome. And then over here, you're also gonna have a bouncing pad. Um, once again, same company, the vertical reality. But these are just two fun things that they added on to the ship. Right, so now we're headed to the marketplace. So this is kind of the start of uh, the, well, two bars of here, of course. The bar over there is ready to rock. They're just opening this one up. This is Waves Bar and uh, well, once again, you're looking for chilling by the pool, having a drink, this is the place to be. All right, so here I am wasting away again in Margaritaville. 
loving it. I'm a big uh, Jimmy Buffett fan, a little bit of a parrot head, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but I love that they have this restaurant on board. The ship is sailing in the Caribbean right now, and you know, who says the Caribbean better than Jimmy Buffett does? Black and Shrimp Caesar, one of my all-time favorites, and then of course you can't have a Caribbean meal without the conch fritters, they're fantastic. And of course, the bartenders here make the best margaritas in the entire world, not just on the high seas, but the entire world. So follow me on back. I just wanted to show you about show you the kitchen. One great thing that this has is the open kitchen concept. I love it because you get all of the food smells coming at you. Once again, this is a specialty restaurant. There's an additional charge for it. Uh, you can order a la carte or you can use your package. All right, so just outside the Garden Cafe, you have some extra overflow seating here all the way on to the pool deck as well. But I just wanted to take you into the main space. So today is turnaround day. And in just a, a few hours when everybody's on board, you're gonna find that this space gets a little bit crowded. But keep in mind, there's other dining places that you can do. And of course, if you're in the Haven, you can go straight to the Haven and you can dine that way as well. So, oh, oh, my happy spot. I'll come back to get you. They haven't quite set it up completely, but this is uh, the, the soft serve. This is where you're gonna find me, my daughter, my nieces and nephews every single day of our entire cruise. So you have a, a mix of seating. What I do like is they always have accessible seating right by the, uh, the entryways, but you have a ton of seating here. And as you follow me around, you'll see that it's really, really spread out and a great space. So you're gonna have salads here. This is the carving station. They'll have a nice uh, uh, ribeye here, prime rib in just a few minutes. You got your pasta station and sandwiches. And throughout the entire you know, buffet and then throughout the entire ship, you're gonna have these beverage stations. So everything that you see here is completely complimentary. So you've got your teas, you've got your coffees, milk, um, and then on the other side, you're also gonna have the Vitality water, which is flavored water. Really appreciate that. And then you're also gonna have these wine stations. You can use your card here and then uh, just dispense it by the glass. So automated wine, I'm down with that for sure. So as we continue back on through the space, once again, this is the, the end of the beverage station. Now we're at the, uh, the soup and, well, once again, my favorite spot is the ice cream station. Uh, this is gonna be delicious, delicious ice cream, just a few. The only, uh, the only thing that I run into is they usually know my order by the first day, so. Well, anyway, I guess it makes it easy for me. Sweets and fruits, so this is all gonna be the desserts in just a few minutes. But this is where I think that they've really stepped up the game and just done an unbelievable job. The Asian food, specifically the Indian food on board, is some of the best that I have ever had. And to have that quality in the buffet, I think is really speaks a lot. Um, what we've been told and what we've noticed over the last couple of years is with the relationship with Regent and Oceana, they've taken advantage of you know, all the symbiosis with that and they've really stepped up their food game from start to finish in the specialty restaurants and the buffets. And my belief is in this class, I think that Norwegian actually by far has the best standard complimentary food that's included. So once again, you can see now we're at the very back of the ship. This is where I recommend going right when you get on board, especially on boarding day. You're gonna have more stations back here. But what's great about this is you have amazing views out the back of the ship. They have some of the bigger tables. In fact, this is where uh, our family had our Thanksgiving uh, dinner not that long ago, especially with kiddos. It's great because they can get up, they can make a little noise, they can move around. Uh, but this is usually not as crowded as the rest of the space. So as we continue on through, um, you have a bar here in the very, very back. And then the other side is identical to what you just saw. And they open them up at different times so they might close down breakfast and keep the other, and, and you know, start working on lunch while the other one's still operating breakfast. But you can see the beverage stations once again, but this is a really fantastic buffet option. And once again, I think the food is the best in the class by far. Right, so in the very aft of the ship is where you go when you're an adult in the evening and you're feeling a little bit spicy. This is Spice H2O, it's a multi-use space. As you can see, there's a massive screen in the back. Uh, when I've had conferences on board and events, this is something that they've taken offline and we've had a huge party. In fact, our big Nexion party was right here. Had an amazing time, of course. Over to my left, you've got this uh, water feature where you can sit inside the water itself or just walk through, chill off. Of course, once again, when you're in the Caribbean, it's a huge thing to have. They have all the deck chairs here. They will be out here in just a bit, once again turning it around right now and they're just cleaning all of the entire spaces. You've got the hot tub and the shower over in the corner. And then on the opposite side, you have another hot tub and shower. And then of course you see all of the lights up here because this turns into kind of an adult nightclub in the evening. And then there's also other activities throughout the day. If it's gonna be an adults only area, of course there's one thing that you have to have and that is the bar. Bar's just over here, and then they've added a bunch of really nice furniture. In fact, it's really beautiful when they did the renovation, and I think this is a fantastic space. Once again, adults only, and a complimentary adults only space. 
All right, so now we're headed up to deck 17. I wanted to point out that they'll have loungers here in just a few minutes. Uh, right now, it's been raining actually all morning and it just cleared up. And so now they're starting to put out all of that space. And then up the stairs here as well, you have a huge sun deck. If you are a sun worshiper, this spot, the sun deck is perfect for you. It's absolutely awesome. Keep in mind, it is open to anybody and everybody. And then as we head into the Vibe Beach Club, you'll see the adults only area. So I hope you two are feeling the good vibes. I am now walking into the Vibe Beach Beach Club. So what the Vibe Beach Club is, it's the adults only area on board and it's a beach club. It's a place where you can drink, relax, hang out, enjoy, have a great time with just adults. The big important thing to note is that you can buy this as a weekly pass and it does sell out. You can book it on boarding day. Uh, right now they're actually having the, the sales down in the Headliner Comedy Club, but just wanted to point out that this is a huge space for Vibe if you compare it to the rest of the fleet and the rest of the adults only areas on board other cruise ships, but it goes all the way to the very front, which is where I like to be. You've got these beautiful views out the front and then these nice soft padded deck chairs throughout the entire space. All right, so I just wanted to point out that today is boarding day. They're just setting it up. In fact, the very, very first passengers have just come in here to, uh, to have access to Vibe. This will pick up, of course, throughout the cruise and then when the sun comes out here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to show you this side because it gives you a little better perspective of what the space is really about. You got these really nice soft padded loungers with the nice terry cloth covers there. You got these two beautiful hot tubs that have amazing views out the side of the ship. And then as we continue down this way, of course, you got the showers so you can rinse off before or after the hot tub, but also just to cool down in the Caribbean. I did want to point out that they have these great cabanas that are for rent. You rent them for the entire cruise. The price does vary a little bit, but I just wanted to take you in here for a second because once again, this is really kind of a truly private space here that you have. This comes down, you get a little bit of shade so you can get a ton of sun, you get a ton of shade. But once again, for two people, it's just a really cool place to hang out. And then right here, you also have storage and uh, well, you know what, I'm gonna be storing in there, a nice bucket of ice and maybe a few Coronas. Okay, so as we continue on, there's more day beds. Once again, they're just in the setup phase. They're gonna be putting the, the towel cloths over them in just a minute. But I wanted to point out that just to the front of here is the Haven sun deck. And then right over here is, is the other part of the Haven sun deck as well. So it kind of wraps around the courtyard pool. That's, that's just to give you a reference of where Vibe is and how it fits into the ship. All right, so now we're headed in to the happiest place on earth, at least my happy place, which is the Haven. So the Haven is a key card access area. So I just wanted to point out that when this door shuts, unless you're staying in a Haven suite, you cannot get in here at all. It's a beautiful, beautiful space, but what this is about is it's about taking a boutique luxury experience and putting it into a large mega ship. So you have all of the amenities from a large mega ship, but you're also gonna have all the little touches and the luxuries of a boutique hotel. So it's important to note that some of the state rooms, or sorry, some of the suites are inside of the Haven and some are located outside of the Haven, but if you are in a Haven suite, you get full access to this space. I wanted to point out this stairway. So there are some Haven uh, suites down on deck 15 as well that have direct access up through the stairway. And you can also get to the spa this way um, as well. So we're gonna continue on through into the main part of the Haven. So that's gonna be the reception area in just a few minutes when guests are boarding. Uh, we're gonna have some awesome staff members here. They're gonna handle all of the things that you would possibly need. As your travel agent, we actually coordinate with the Haven well in advance before you get on the ship so they understand what you need and also can pre-reserve things. But there's a few little touches that you might wanna take care of as soon as you get on board and also getting on the Wi-Fi and things like that. They're gonna help you with all of it as well as reservations throughout the entire cruise. You can also utilize your butler for those things. So you can see this is the Haven Lounge. It's a really beautiful space. Uh, it's been totally updated and upgraded since they did the massive renovation in 2019. Once again, I really, really appreciate that. And it's actually more in line with some of the newer Haven products. And here's the Haven Bar. One thing that I love about the Haven Bar, you're always gonna have the best bartenders on the entire ship. They always have an amazing personality and fun. And I'm gonna be back in the Haven in just a few weeks. I'm really excited because one of my favorite bartenders is still on board. We're still in communication. And uh, yeah, this is just a really, really great place also to meet fantastic people. This is also where you can hang out and relax before you're going in to dine. One of the unique experiences of having the Haven is that you have the Haven restaurant. You can dine in there breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day if you like, and you can actually order your room service from the Haven restaurant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All right, so now we're headed into the Haven restaurant. It's a fantastic size space. I've never had any problem getting reservations on board. Once again, you cannot pre-reserve the reservations. But what it is, is once again, a very elegant dining. You notice that the glassware, the cutlery, the dishes, everything is upgraded throughout the, you know, compared to the other experiences on board. And then over here, you have a massive wine collection. This is just a little bit, but Norwegian has a phenomenal wine collection. And every single stateroom on board and suite is going to get the option to take the beverage package. You can also upgrade to the premium plus beverage package. If you're interested, we have a video on that 
that if you want to check it out. But it really kind of tells you what it's all about. If you like those higher end liqueurs and spirits, it's definitely going to be worth it. So right here in the morning, you're going to have a breakfast buffet. Of course, you can order from the menu. Sometimes people just like to grab and go. I know with my daughter, sometimes we'll just grab some you know, fruit and yogurt and things like that and then just head on out for the day. But now as I continue into the rest of the space, you can see a little more of it. Little touches like this beautiful chandelier throughout. Um, and then also you can notice that you have two tops, four tops. They can also put it together if you happen to be cruising with a larger family group. And I always try to request the tables by the window. There's not a ton of window seating here, but once again, the elevated dining experience makes up for it completely. All right, so now I'm headed out to the courtyard. So this is a fantastic private space just for those in the Haven. And what I love is that it, this part is completely family friendly as well. When I cruise with my daughter, this is a great spot, uh, especially when you're staying in a two bedroom family villa, you just pop out, you've got the pool, you got this little tiny wading pool, and then you also have these uh, loungers that are in there so you can put your feet in water and get nice and cool. Because once again, this spends a lot of time in the Caribbean, and then it's also gonna go to Europe during the summer. As you continue on, you can see that you have two hot tubs. Once again, this is turnaround day. Everything's getting cleaned up right now. You can see here, you've got a hot tub here. You've got a matching one over the side. And then also all up around us, we're surrounded by the Haven Sun Deck. So this is accessed only by, once again, those who are in the Haven, whether you're staying in the complex itself or if you have one of the suites outside of the complex. All right, so now I'm gonna head up to the sun deck from the courtyard. But before we did, I just wanted to point out this has a super unique feature. It actually has its own spa for the Haven. I'm gonna take you in this treatment room real quick. One great, great thing that I love, I really appreciate that Norwegian has done, is that this treatment room is actually fully accessible, and then there's a restroom right here that's fully accessible as well. There's a treatment room here, and then another one right next to it. But another fantastic feature that you don't find to be complimentary that often on cruise ships anymore is a sauna. Once again, this is only utilized by Haven guests, but it's a pretty good size sauna here. You've got the bench seating, and uh, ah, nice and warm, appreciate that. All right, so just up the stairs here is the sun deck. A couple important things to note, it is 16 plus only, so families can use the courtyard and the pool, but the sun deck is just for those who are 16 and above. You got the great spot that looks out the very front of the ship, a lot of loungers. It's actually a really, really big space for a haven this size. All right, so just outside the haven on deck 16 is the guppies playroom. So what's important to note is this is not a place where you can drop off the kiddos. This is a place for them to play. So the littlest one, six months to three years old, on this particular ship, they don't have a drop off area completely. So but for me, when I cruised with my daughter, when she was really, really young, it was just really nice to have a space where she could come in, play. There was always other little kiddos in here and have some fun. Uh, but once again, when every member of the family is happy, you have a great vacation. All right, so now I'm headed into the Splash Academy. This is all about kids. A perfect family vacation meets the needs of absolutely everybody in the family. And so for kids, it starts right here. Just wanted to point out here, they have several security measures. As soon as you get on board the ship, you're going to want to come up here with your kids, get them registered, get the wristbands on, but also that way you can tell them who can pick them up, who can drop them off. It's very much like a daycare in that sense. You want to make sure that only the right people are, are doing that. They do an amazing job at that, but if you don't give them permission, they might get shut down if, you know, if your, your dad or your grandpa or somebody comes to pick them up. So make sure that you give all those proper permissions. Right now I'm in the space that's dedicated to the three to five year olds. There's, it's a multi-use space you'll see upstairs in just a minute. Um, but what I love about it is this is a ton of space for this age group. It really is, especially for a ship this size. And you see that they have all the tables and everything set up. It's age appropriate. Once again, it's small. I know when my daughter was potty training and she was going through, you know, toddler stages, it was great to have things that were actually her size because she felt like she fit there and she felt that she belonged. And then I just wanted to step in here as well. This is where you're gonna have the Nintendo Wii's over here. So you got different games that they can play. They also have movies. They've got the big bean bags. But once again, it's just meant to be a really comfortable place. And we know that if our kids are happy, mom and dad are gonna be happy. So right above is actually another massive space devoted specifically to the kiddos. So right here, there's two spaces that actually separate out, they close off. You're gonna have the six to nine year olds and then also the 10 to 12 year olds over here. Just wanted to point out they have a ton of the Nintendo Wii's uh, around. So right here you can do the kinetic games, who doesn't love that? I mean, had a few bowling tournaments myself. And then as you see, they put up all kinds of different signage and things throughout the cruise. Each night's gonna be a different theme that's a lot of fun for the kids. And what I love is they really go out of their way to make, you know, of course the age appropriate programming, but they constantly keep it going. So there's lots of different options. So we all know that kids are into different things. And by moving it along quite a bit, 
everybody seems to have what they need. I recently cruised with my daughter, who was four years old, so of course she was in the downstairs area, but what I really appreciated was it's the counselors that make this space special. You can see, of course, behind all these, uh, these cupboards, you're gonna have a ton of art supplies, there's always things happening, science experiments and stuff like that, but once again, it's the people that makes it special. The, the counselors on board, they all have a background in child development, they all choose to be here, and they are all fantastic. All right, so now we're in the Entourage Teen Club, and that is exactly what it is. It's a teen club. So over here, you've got the dance floor. They're gonna have parties every single night in here for the, for the teenagers. You got a DJ booth. Of course, there's TVs all up and around. Over here, you're gonna have your uh, air hockey table. They've got some great furniture through them, so you know all different kinds where they can, well, Oh wait, sorry, never mind. Oh, okay. That was not as soft as I thought it was, but anyway, we'll try that again. This one, I think is, there we go. Oh, all right. Because I know this is pretty much the favorite position of any teenager ever. Or, let me change that for you. The second favorite position is right here on the chair playing, you know, video games, of course. Anyway, there we go. So once again, this is for 13 to 17 year olds. Only it's very important to note that if they're 12, they cannot come in. I get that question all the time. Also have these bean bags over here in the corner. But once again, this is the place for teenagers to be teenagers, to be away from the adults and really just have a fantastic time. I was a middle school teacher for 10 years and I absolutely love this space for the teenagers because frankly, this is everything that they're looking for. So just outside the Entourage Teen Lounge is the arcade. So this is meant for, well, not just kids, but for anybody who loves arcade games. I know when I go on board, a lot of times I'll buy the unlimited pass so that I can use it with my with my daughter. We both get it uh, and have an absolute blast. But over here, you've got basketball, you've got skee-ball, air hockey, you've got the different claw games. And what's really great is they've been adding some of the more like virtual reality type games as well. But once again, this is what it is. It's an arcade. The most important thing for you to know is it's an additional cost. So make sure that you talk to your kids about that. You set a budget or you decide exactly how you're gonna do it. And then I'll just take you one more up. Got the Terminator game, the pirate game, and then this is the favorite one that I play with my daughter is the, uh, the Jurassic Park game. All right, so now we're headed into the Pulse Fitness Center. So if you are coming on a cruise to exercise, I'll be honest, I probably should, but don't always do that. This is a fantastic space for you. So this side is pretty much all cardio. You've got rowing machine, you've got uh, the different kinds of bikes, the treadmills. One thing that I really do like is that the ceiling height is tall enough. I'm six foot six, and a lot of times, the it, it's well, specifically on other cruise lines, I can't fit on the treadmills. Once again, not that I use it as much as I should, but anyway, uh, you've got the ellipticals here, and then once again, more treadmills, which are fantastic to have these great views looking out when you're exercising. And then in the back, you have your fitness consulting. They'll do different kind of body analysis for you, and then of course, personal training if you'd like that. All right, so now on the other side is where you're gonna find all the equipment. In the back there, they've got the yoga mats, they've got the different balls, the kettlebells, and then uh, the free, weight, free weights here as well, and the dumbbells are all over on the other side, and then all the pulley equipment that you could possibly imagine. And then for whatever reason, they also have one thing in here that I really wish would get removed someday, but you know, eh. Nah, it's lying, it's lying, it's not true, it's not true. All right, well anyway. Talk about that later. I also wanted to point out that inside this room, you're also gonna have the spin classes as well. So ton of opportunities for aerobics, for weightlifting, and just about any kind of exercise that you're looking for. So one final space is the last big aerobic space. Once again, you've got kettlebells here and all kinds of equipment. This is another aerobic workout space. They do different kinds of things like kickboxing, you can see there, boxing as well, along with uh, just about any kind of aerobic activity that you can imagine. That's about it. Do, 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 do. All right, anyway, there we go. All right, so as you walk in the Mandara Spa, you turn just to the left and you're gonna be in the barber shop. So it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a classic barber shop. It's really meant for the men to have all of their spa treatments, shaves, things like that. And then we're gonna head over to the beauty shop now. I just wanted to point out, this is the Mandara Spa entryway right here and it's the main desk where you're gonna sign up for all the treatments. Right now it's pretty busy because it's boarding day. Once again, if you know exactly what you want, you wanna do it as soon as you get on board. All right, so now we're in the beauty salon. Of course, you can get just about any treatment or anything that you'd have on land. So here's all the hair treatments. You can get your hair colored, ready, and of course, get all decked up and ready to go out for the night. And in here, you're gonna have your two pedicure chairs. I will vouch for it. I've had a pedi in here myself. The bowl's big enough for size 15 shoes. Really appreciate that, or feet. No shoes in there, of course. And then right here, you can get your manicure. And once again, an amazing view looking out the, at, at the beautiful Caribbean while you sit down and pamper yourself. All right, so now we are in the thermal suite. There's tons of comfy areas to sit in here. 
This is complimentary for those who have a Haven spa suite, one of the balconies or mini suites with thermal suite access as well. And then you can also buy the passes. Just keep in mind, passes go really, really quick on the very first day. So that's something you wanna purchase right when you get on board if you have not pre-purchased it as part of your suite or room package. So this is the heart of the hydrotherapy pool area. So you've got the big waterfall jets over there and then all around they have different kinds of therapies. So you can kind of lounge in the very back with the bubbles coming up. And then over here, you're gonna have the harder jets and then all the way over to the side, you basically hang on and you get uh, the massage. My favorite place though is actually these stone loungers just in front, they're heated. I've been having some back problems lately. So for me, sitting down, oh goodness, I may never get back up. But sitting here, relaxing, maybe reading a book, looking at the beautiful ocean view out in front of me. Oh, I'll catch you guys later. So as we continue on, you have all of the different therapies. So the first one here is the scenarium. So what a scenarium is, is it's kind of like a sauna with just a little bit of moisture. And over here, you're gonna have a shower in front of each one so that you, of course, can, can rinse off before and after. And then we're gonna continue on along here. The next is gonna be a sauna. So this is a full dry sauna. I'll open it up for you real quick so you can see what it's about. Once again, pretty big space here. It's a little warm in here, oddly enough. Fair enough. Okay, once again, you've got a shower just outside. And I'm gonna continue along here. And of course, they always have a ton of towels ready to rock, and then you have your salt bath right here. So it's a really large space. In fact, I think it's the largest salt baths of all of the Norwegian ships. But what this is about is, uh, I don't really understand completely how it works, but the whole idea is to let the salts and the minerals kind of absorb into your body and uh, just relax and be healthier, of course. I usually put my salt on the rim of my margarita, margarita glass, and that does a, does a pretty good job for me. Aromatic steam bath, exactly what it sounds like. And then the steam room, I'm not gonna open that up just because it's gonna <laughs> mess up the camera. And then finally you have this huge rainforest shower head and some more seating here looking out either the side or out the front of the ship. All right, so one of the major innovations that Norwegian came up with in the breakaway class and really kind of one of the identifying features of it is the waterfront. So the idea is to take the indoor seating, the indoor restaurants and optimize the ocean front because of course you're sailing in the ocean. So what I love about it is this is La Cucina, for example, but if you wanna dine outside, you can dine al fresco. I enjoyed it quite a bit, especially I was just recently in Alaska and each of the ships that they've, they've done since the breakaway, so the getaway of course was the second one and then the breakaway plus as well. I think they've really, really improved it. They've made the space bigger, but there's been a massive customer satisfaction surveys um, about how well they, they like the, the waterfront and of course it's gonna to continue to be on all of the future ships. So as we continue on back, in addition to the restaurants as well, you're also gonna have the outdoor seating for the different bars. So if you'll follow me on down, I wanted to show you the Sugar Cane Mojito Bar specifically. Uh, but once again, when you're sailing away, it's been a little overcast and rainy throughout the day today. But once, uh, once the sun comes out, the Caribbean music starts popping, of course, the Sugar Cane Mojito Bar is the place to be. Once again, there's bars on both sides and then all of the restaurants on deck eight have an indoor outdoor seating area. And I always say that the bartender here has the best view of any bartender probably in the entire world. All right, so the first restaurant that you're gonna encounter here is La Cucina. So La Cucina is a Italian restaurant. It's unapologetic about being an Italian restaurant. They have great pizza, they have great pasta. Let me take you in the space here. This has been on every single one of Norwegian's freestyle ships that they've ever built. And it's one that is very, very popular here. So you see here, you've got the full bar, espresso maker. What I like is you kind of have a, that feeling like you're in an outdoor cafe. They've even got the railings to kind of set up that way. But uh, when you're sitting here, you have that indoor outdoor feeling even though you're in the ship. And then that part is great for people watching as well. So now we're into the main dining room portion of La Cucina. Of course, you got your olive oil and your balsamic vinegar. That's a must. Great pizza ovens. I love the pizzas here. I get them all the time. So in addition to this fantastic inside dining room, you can see it goes all the way back there. You're also going to have the waterfront dining uh, that's close in and then also the one that's right on the water if that is something you're interested in. All right, so just across from La Cucina is Sid Norman's Poor House. This sign kind of says it all. Cold beer, cocktails, rock and roll. Soup of the day is cerveza or beer. Well, we're going to be in Mexico in just a few days. So all right, so follow me on into this space. It was totally updated. Actually, it was created when they did the massive renovation in 2019. But what this space is all about, it's about having a rock and roll show, having a few drinks, really, really enjoying it with your friends. And this place gets really loud and it really, really rocks out when you get in the evenings. I'm gonna sit in my specific chair, you know, the don't even sit there chair. This is uh, me specifically. So you'll find me here in just a couple hours with a drink in my hand, enjoying the rock and roll. This is a dance floor as well too. So. What do you know? Getting after it here, a little 
Oh, I don't know. Never mind. Sorry about that. All right. What I noticed the most about this space is I feel like the decor has been completely updated to be very much in line with the brand new ships. So it's a lot more eclectic. It's a little kind of mishmash, but it's really, really beautiful. And then, of course, this is where the pours are going to happen. The bar here. Once again, this is going to get rocking here in just a few hours as soon as we set sail. All right, so just across from La Cucina next to Sid Norman's is the Sunset Bar. So this is a very, very social area. What's great about it is you, when you sit here, you're open to everybody walking by. So if you kind of like that, uh, that full social experience, this is probably the best bar on the ship for it. You notice that you have a huge assortment of liqueurs and liquors that are there. And then one other great thing about this spot particularly is if you are a cigar lover, they also have the humidor. It's, it's one of the few places that you can smoke on board, but they also will sell all of the different cigars that you, you want, or of course you can bring it back on board from your cruise. All right, so now we're headed to the ice bar. When you are in the Caribbean, this is an amazing place to be because it's nice and cold. Follow me on as I show you what it's all about. All right, so we are in the Caribbean, and now I am in the opposite of the Caribbean. I am in the ice bar. It's freezing cold in here, as it should be. This particular space debuted on the Norwegian Epic, and it's been a pretty big hit uh, throughout you know, all the ships that they've added it onto. But what it's all about is a freezing cold space. You get a jacket that you can put on. They're gonna pour your drinks. Of course, it's sponsored by Spy Sky Vodka. There's kind of a partnership there. Uh, but even the uh, parts of the, the bar are made of ice. This is all ice here. And then of course they have my seat ready for me here. And uh, yes, please, caviar, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sky Vodka, I'm in. All right, so now we're gonna go from freezing cold to the tropics, to the sugar cane mojito bar. This always seems to be kind of the meetup bar for myself and my friends and my family when we are on, on board this ship. Uh, but once again, it's a mojito bar. As a bartender, one of my least favorite things to make was a mojito because there's several different elements that go into it, but they're all prepped and ready to go. They always have it appropriately staffed. So if you love a great mojito, this is the place for you. And then I wanted to continue on and point out that in addition to a fantastic bar, they also have the piano here and and uh, you're gonna have a full music setup each and every evening. So if you like those tropical tunes and you like rocking out a little bit, this is the place for you. Okay, so just across from Sugar Cane Mojito Bar, you have the raw bar. So this is dedicated to everything seafood. You've got the raw bar here, and then you have Ocean Blue. My absolute favorite, I love the ceviche, but you can't go wrong with the surf and turf, you know, the jumbo shrimp, the crab cakes too, they're pretty darn good. Everything I've ever had here has been really, really good. But once again, this is dedicated to seafood lovers and make sure that you do know that there is an upcharge even if you're using your specialty dining package, just something you wanna keep in mind. And then just across is wasabi, keeping with that seafood theme. This is a sushi bar. Once again, you'll probably find me parked right over there. I absolutely love talking to the sushi chefs and uh, I can just sit here and eat pretty much all day because sushi is really my thing, I love it. So it, just like La Cucina and all of the restaurants on the waterfront and the bars, you're also gonna have outdoor seating, which is a fantastic option, especially when you're sailing in the Caribbean. All right, so as we continue aft on deck eight, we are now into the center of retail. If you came on board the ship to buy things, this is the perfect place for you. And one of the things that I love about it is everything is gonna be duty free. So if you were gonna buy a watch or you know, Valentine's Day was just a couple days ago, if you're gonna buy something for your, your sweetheart, this is a great place to do it because it's gonna be less expensive than it will be on land. So the shops will open up as soon as we set sail. You've gotta be outside and in international waters before they can open up all of those shops. Once again, here is a ton of sunglasses. I always seem to break or lose my sunglasses and end up buying another pair there. You've got the Tides Boutique. So this is gonna be you know, purses and, and things like that. And then as you head on back even further here, you're also gonna have where the photos. So if you are taking photos throughout the, the cruise, of course, that's something that you do on just about every cruise. This is where you can come and they have these nice little folios all ready for you so that you can actually just grab your photos and good to go. One of the nice things is they added in the digital piece here when they did the massive renovation. So you just swipe your card and you can actually have access to your photos right there. If you do love towel animals, and I do, this is a great gift to bring home, especially for, for kids. I know my daughter absolutely loves her towel animal that she has at home. All right, so now we're headed to the very, very back where you're gonna have Cagney's and Moderno. But what I really like about this space is they've treated it kind of as a, a very old school, elegant steakhouse vibe. You know, Cagney's is itself, but as we walk in, you even get that. You got the beautiful wood floors, you got all this new furniture. Once again, all of this was updated and completely replaced during the recent massive renovation that they have. And then right at the very back, you're gonna have the Prime Meridian Bar. So this is the perfect place to grab a drink even before, either before or after you're dining. So Cagney's is gonna be over to my right. I'll take you there in a second. Moderno to the left. But once again, this is a fantastic option to grab a drink before or after, and you're kind of in the middle of all of it. 
This is the overflow seating for Cagney's here. They've actually expanded the space. It's such a popular restaurant on board. Cagney's has been a restaurant on board since the beginning of Freestyle. It's one of the most popular. It does fill up every single night. So if you want to get a reservation uh, ahead of time, it's something that we really recommend. Keep in mind that at the 120 day mark after final payment, all of the restaurants have reservations that are open and then they reserve some of that space as well for when you get on board. So if you don't pre-reserve, make sure that you do it as soon as you get on board. But you can see Cagney's is a really big space. It goes all the way to the back. And personally, I always request either the outdoor area, because once again, this is on the waterfront, so you have full waterfront seating, or I request the, the tables in the very, very back. If you're in the Haven, just make sure that you let your butler know or whoever is arranging that so that they can request that for you. All right, so I did want to point out that if you pick one of the seats or you get one of the seats that's right around here, the Tropicana a ballroom is just below. That's a huge dining venue where they have music and dancing. I'll, I'll talk more about that when we get down there. But on both uh, the Moderno side, on the overflow, and then also on the other side of Cagney's, you can get the seats that you can look down. If you love people watching, that is a fantastic option. So now we've crossed over into Moderno. It is a Brazilian steakhouse, a churrascaria. This is gonna be a really large buffet where you've got all kinds of different salads and uh, actually a ton of different appetizers and sides. You order from the menu and then they also will bring around uh, the meat where they'll just carve it right at your table as you would expect from a Brazilian steakhouse. I did just wanna point out that at this table, I have some really fantastic memories. One of my mentors, or my, my only mentor, Jackie Friedman, who's the president of Nexion, an amazing human being. Uh, but this is where we sat and had dinner to celebrate my very first President's Club, which meant a huge deal to me and my family. So now we're in the Getaway Theater. It is a fantastic entertainment space on board. The two shows that they're gonna have are Million Dollar Quartet, one of my all-time favorite. I mean, the music, everybody knows it, it's incredible. Um, and then also they have Burn the Floor. They do a preview of Burn the Floor in the uh, Tropicana room as well. So that's first come, first serve. Anything in here you do need to pre-reserve. Keep in mind though, about 15 minutes prior to showtime, they do release the rest of the seats and then also a few minutes before, they'll release the rest of the Haven seats as well. So if you didn't get a reservation or maybe you missed, uh, you missed the one that you were planning on, you can go ahead and show up as well and then they'll let you in as long as there's seating available. But once again, you can see it's a really large venue. They upgraded all the sound systems and the lighting when they did the renovation and it's just a fantastic place to take in a show. So right as you're heading into the Getaway Theater is the box office. Keep in mind that you can pre-reserve your entertainment. If you didn't pre-reserve it before you go, we highly recommend that as soon as you get on board, you either find one of the kiosks to do it or you come in here to the box office. They'll help you. They have all the shows for the entire week all ready to go. They'll highlight the one that you're signed up for and uh, make sure that you have all the information on it. But once again, even if you don't get the show that you want ahead of time, you can always come on board and check with them and they do reserve quite a bit of that seating for when you get on board. All right, so now we're headed into Oceans. This is a multi-use space because right here, you're actually in the restaurant as well, where you're looking down at the atrium. So if you wanna be part of the action, this is the perfect place for that. But it's a really, really large space on board this ship. Actually, I think it's bigger than it is on some of their newer ships, which I really appreciate. This is a, a kind of a pub style menu, but you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's open 24 hours a day and it's all complimentary. Several times on our last cruise, uh, we, we had breakfast here or uh, I've been known to have maybe have some wings at one or uh, maybe possibly two in the morning. Um, and now we're gonna head over to the bar area. So this particular bar is very, very special to me as a human because uh, Tracy and Zach, two of my all time favorite humans on the planet, they met right here when we were on one of our conferences. So I love this space, but that's what this is all about. It's about familial, uh, you know, fun with all of the, your, your friends and family that are along with you and watching maybe a sports game or, uh, you know, especially uh, football. Love, love me watching some football on Sunday on board Norwegian. And then the other side of the space is actually a full arcade. So you've got the bowling alley down there. You've got uh, the, the Papa Shot basketball. That's where you're gonna find me for sure many, many times on board the cruise. And then once again, just a fun arcade game because as you get over to that far side, it's kind of more of the adult arcade, but this entire space except for the bar is really a family space. All right, so now we're heading from Oceans into the casino. It is a huge, huge casino for a ship this size. They've got all the casino games you can imagine. Let it ride, three card poker, ultimate hold'em. Um, of course, you've got roulette and craps as well. But if you're into the really high limit gaming, I just wanted to point out this room. They've got Baccarat and then they also have Blackjack, but this is usually gonna start at 100 or, or more and up. So if you're into the high limit gaming, they will take great care of you. And then as you continue on, once again, you can see all of the classic card tables, um, and then of course, a ton of machines. And they have machines of all denominations, so if you just wanna play a little bit casually, it's perfect for that as well. 
One great thing about this casino is it's wrapped completely around this stunning atrium. So one of the signatures of the Breakaway and the Breakaway Plus class ships are these phenomenal ch chandeliers that are, have LED backlight in them. But what it does is it opens up this space to three levels. This is called the 678 complex. Right now, of course, we're in seven in the sandwich deck in the middle. You can look down and see Le Bistro below you and headliners. But what I love is it just really kind of opens up the entire ship here. Okay, so just at the very back of the casino, you're gonna have the Bliss Lounge. Once again, I love this space because when I'm walking through spaces on cruise ships that I've, I've taken, right, the cruises that I've experienced myself, it floods all of the memories. So when we had our Nexion uh, cruise a couple years ago, once, once again, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. Everybody did an amazing job, but this is where we would come each evening and hang out. You got the nice, soft, padded couches over here in the corner, kind of in a separate area away from everybody else. And then in here, you're gonna have some loud music going on, or uh, one of the other things that they do in here is the silent disco. I love that. I think it's actually hilarious to see everybody dancing their heads off and you can't really hear any of the music that's going on. You have a full huge bar here. They usually have extra bartenders. Once again, this is an 18 and up space in the evening. So it really is a true nightclub and lounge that they don't have on all of their other ships. So now I'm on the dance floor where, you know, gonna mm -hmm, get after it. You know what I mean? But uh, once again, when I'm standing here, I just love all of the memories that come flooding back. This is just a great place to be in the evening if you love that that nightclub atmosphere. All right, so I'm heading out of the Ultra Lounge. Just wanted to point out this Bar 21. If you're somebody who likes to sit at the bar and play games uh, like Kino or poker, this is a perfect bar for that. And then I'm gonna take you over to another space that I really like that they don't have on all their ships that frankly, I kind of wish that they did. And that's Shanghai's Noodle Bar. So it's exactly what you think it is. It's an Asian style noodle bar. All of the seating is very similar. It's all this high top and then it's open. The kitchen is completely open back there so that you can see what's going on. But just uh, every meal that I've had in here was absolutely delicious. All right, so now we are heading into the Tropicana restaurant and I guess you could call it nightclub theater as well. I think it's so fitting that uh, the ship sails in the south that really re reminds me of kind of this, uh, this whole Miami vibe, the old school kind of Rat Pack era. This is actually where they do the, uh, the full production of Dan uh, Burn the Floor here uh, in, in right up there on the dance floor. But what you can see is it's a really, really large restaurant space. It's complimentary. It is one of the three main complimentary restaurants on board. You can eat here breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's not always open for breakfast, kind of depends on the, the schedule. But as I get through this space, you can see here, this is what it's really all about. In fact, my, my echo changed because it's a huge open space that you don't usually find on cruise ships. It's not only a beautiful space, but once again, they have the full uh, dance floor out here, and then they also have the full bandstand, and they do the burn the floor show right here. What a fantastic way to have dinner and then kind of take it to another level. So I already mentioned that when you cruise on a ship, again, all the memories come flooding back. But what I love so much about this space on the getaway, one, I love cruise ship models, that's a super cool one. But what I love is that they've put up all of the different plaques for the places you go. So as soon as you are, you know, go to a new port for the very first time, wherever it is in the world, they always present a ship with a plaque to commemorate it. So this kind of tells the story of this ship. So you've got St. Thomas and the Virgin Islands, of course, here, but you have also all the stops that they've taken in the Baltic. But once again, this is just a really cool space where you can kind of learn learn a little bit more about the history of the ship, where it's been and what it's all about. So right now I'm in Taste. It's the exact you know, sister of Savor on the other side. These are the other two complimentary restaurants on board. So once again, you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner in here. Breakfast isn't always available, just depending on, on the date. But like right now, one of the great places to be is here on boarding day. It's just before noon, and they're just opening this up. And so you have another complimentary restaurant on board that you can take advantage of. Just show you a little bit more about the space, but once again, they've got eclectic seating in here. You've got the benches. Uh, you, they can put them together to make eight, 10. I've dined with parties of 10 in here quite a bit, but I always, when it's just my wife and I, request the table for two right by the window. All right, so this is the mix bar that's right between Taste and Savor. These are the two complimentary restaurants that are down here on deck six. The menus change constantly. Once again, you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, when it's open. Most Sometimes lunch and dinner is only one. But I did want to point out reservations. You cannot pre-reserve this space on the day of. You could make a 5.30 or 9 o'clock reservation early or late. Otherwise, it's just first come, first serve. But of course, you can pre-reserve the specialty restaurants. All right, so just outside of Mix, I'm gonna head forward on the ship, and what you have is the Park West Gallery. So Norwegian Cruise Lines has a partnership with Park West where you can purchase any of these on board. And I actually have quite a few of my customers that come on board just to do that. And once again, it is duty-free, so that's a big advantage. All right, so now we're gonna head into Teppanyaki. Teppanyaki has been one of the most popular restaurants on board since Norwegian Cruise Lines started freestyle cruising. And for a lot of reasons. One, it's a fun and interactive way to eat. 
I dined with my daughter and my niece and nephew on board recently. And once again, you know, everybody's pounding on the table. What kid doesn't like to have the permission to be able to pound their, you know, their silverware on the table? But the chefs do a great job to engage you, to make you feel like you're part of it. And once again, this is a massive space. In fact, I think it's one of the biggest ones of any cruise line in the entire world. They have one, two, three, four. I think there's like almost about 12 or 15 of these teppanyaki stations. And what's really nice about these is when they put the two together, they're kind of lower seating instead of on some of the other ships where they're higher. So you can actually have a full large party instead of just the, uh, the, you know, the eight on the one side, you can actually connect it out and have a full party of 16 in here. Okay, so just next to Teppanyaki is Le Bistro. So once again, another one of the classic restaurants on board Norwegian. This is a French restaurant. I wanted to start out here because these are all gonna be set up with tables. And so you kind of get that old, that old school, like Parisian bistro vibe when you're dining outside. And it's more of a social experience. But follow me on into the restaurant itself. All right, and as you can see, it's a beautiful space inside as well and set up as a classic Paris bistro. If you are a venophile, you love wine, you may want to think about upgrading to the Premium Plus beverage package. I did want to point out that in here, they actually have a partnership with Veuve Clicquot, um, the very, you know, very, very fancy and expensive and delicious champagne. But if you upgrade to the Premium Plus, that's actually an included option for you. But what this restaurant is all about is classic French cuisine. Of course, everybody knows the escargot is fantastic here, but I really love all the food and it's one of the choices that I always make when I'm on board Norwegian. Right, so just across from Le Bistro is Headliners Comedy Club. This is actually a multi-use space. It's used for several different things. So one, right now on boarding day, it's actually where you're gonna make your restaurant reservations, but you also can reserve vibe. You wanna make sure that you do that ahead of time because that will sell out really, really quickly. And this is also where you're gonna have Classic Comedy Club, as you would expect. And they also have Howl at the Moon in here, which is the dueling pianos, a really, really fantastic option that I know you're gonna love. And it's so interactive. To me, that's what cruise entertainment is all about. All right, so now we're gonna head on forward to basically you can think of it as the passenger services area and the central hub and beating heart of the ship. So the atrium itself is you know, basically a place where they're gonna do all kinds of game shows, interactive activities. I've been known to sing a song or two of, uh, of karaoke myself, but there's always something that's always hopping. Right now is turnaround day. And so you can see that there's, you know, nobody's, nobody's on here yet. The, Passengers will be on the ship in just a few minutes, but we wanted to take advantage of showing you this space while that's the case. So right here is the central hub, the central atrium area. A lot of seating in here, you've got the piano, but once again, this stage, they're gonna have dancing, singing, and all kinds of fun happening throughout the entire cruise. Now, if you head over here, this is an area that's very important to know about right when you get on the ship. You're gonna have these screens where you can reserve your dining. You can also do some of the entertainment and things like that as well. That's a really quick way to do it right when you get on board the ship if you haven't pre-reserved everything that you want. Over here, you're gonna have your shore excursions desk. Really, really big space, but once again, this is everything to do with getting off the ship in port. So if you're gonna do uh, snorkeling or something along those lines, they're gonna help you with all of that. Once again, we highly recommend that you pre-reserve all of that so that you, and then you take advantage of your, uh, your perk if you happen to have the shore excursion perk as well. Over here, you're gonna have the cruise next desk. This is one of my favorite desks on board, one of the most important because this is where you're gonna get the best best, best value you can possibly get on your cruise by purchasing the Cruise Next certificates. Uh, I can talk to you all about that when you're booking your cruise. But once again, it's just the best way to get the value. It makes sense. It's when you're most excited about the cruise. So they want to capture you then and they give you some really great incentives so that you do that. As we continue on, you have the onboard credit desk. This is gonna be basically anything to do with payments, money, or if you're trying to utilize onboard credit that you got from your travel agent or that you got from Norwegian as one of the perks. And then as we continue along, this is the guest services desk. So this is gonna be the, you know, basically anything that you need on the ship that you have questions about with your account, uh, with planning or anything else along those lines, they're gonna be able to help you for it. My tip is that right when you get on board, this is gonna get pretty, pretty crazy right away because a lot of people have questions trying to figure things out, especially first time cruise and also the very last night before you go, a lot of people are trying to pay their bills, settle it up, uh, make adjustments and things like that. So I tend to avoid it at those times. Sometimes I'll go later in the evening after dinner. That way you don't have any of the lines that are there. But once again, they're going to do a great job taking care of any and all of your needs while you're traveling on board. All right, so here's the atrium bar. So if you like to be very social, this is a great social experience because you also have the atrium right here where you're gonna have all the music and karaoke and uh, game shows that are going on. And also, once again, they always have the most fun bartenders here having a blast. When this ship had this massive renovation recently, they added on a full Starbucks. So this is very similar to what you're gonna find at home at a full Starbucks coffee shop. You have all the items they have. They have the exact syrups and the beans and everything. So if you start your day with Starbucks at home or maybe in the evening as well, this is a awesome addition that they added on to the getaway during the renovation. 
Right, so on the other side of the atrium, you're gonna have the internet cafe. This is where they're gonna help you get your internet set up right away. Make sure that you do dig into what is included. What most people get as one of their perks is either 250 minutes or $125 towards a package. It's not unlimited, so make sure that you understand that. And I always upgrade to the unlimited plan because obviously I need it because I'm usually working while I'm on board. There's also a small internet cafe here as well if you don't have your own device with you. And then you're gonna have the Perspectives Photography Studio. So if you want to have a photo shoot with your family, this is a great time to do it. Everybody's here, especially if you're traveling with a large extended family group. You can do those studio photos that are for Christmas cards or just uh, for memory so that you can last, have them to last a lifetime. So just next to the Perspective Studio, you're also gonna have meeting rooms. I've had quite a few conferences. In fact, I had one of my favorite all kind conferences on board this ship, and this is where the meeting rooms are. And then up here to my right is also the library. Um, this is where you can check out games and check out books, of course. It's not a massive library, but a lot of stuff that we do these days is digital. I love that they've kept it on board so that you can check out a book, especially those of you who really like that, uh, that touch feel of, of reading an actual book. All right, so now I'm headed into the entrance to the Illusionarium. This is a really, really unique thing to have on board a ship. But what I love about this particular space is they really embrace the magic and everything that goes with it. So you've got Blackstone, the world's master magician, but it just all the decor is really, really beautiful. I even love this over here. It's very nautical. So you're taking kind of that Cirque and the magic and putting it together with a cruise vacation. So as we continue into the space, you can see it is super, super cool. I brought my daughter in here, and this was actually one of her favorite spaces on the entire ship, just checking out all the different things that they have that go back a ton of years and really embrace that kind of circus uh, theme that the whole show is going to have. All right, so now we are headed into the Illusionarium. It's another entertainment spot on board. It's kind of a unique space, just the way that it's set up. I really, really think it's a, it's a beautiful space. But what it is, is there's two main shows that, part that happen in here. And of course, it's served with dinner as well. So you have the Cirque du Soleil show, Dreams and Streams, and then you also have Wine Lovers the Musical. Why not? Come on in, enjoy and wine lovers the musical, and enjoy your use your unlimited beverage package to have maybe a few glasses of wine. But follow me on up to the stage. This stage was special built, as you can imagine, with Cirque du Soleil in mind. And then you have this huge dome here as well. We're right below the main theater. But they've they've built this specially out so that they can take advantage of all the things that are Cirque du Soleil. And once again, this is a partnership with them, and they put on a fantastic show. First off, congratulations for making it all the way through the video. We really appreciate you watching. Please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and like the video. It makes a world of difference for us. But we absolutely positively love sharing cruise ships with you. When you are ready to book the Haven, reach out to Hard Travel. We are your Haven Suite Specialist. We'll be happy to take very good care of you, show you the ins and outs, and make sure that you and your family have a vacation of a lifetime at an incredible value.